the, the topic of today's uh, sermon is, what is your excuse? Now, as I began to work on this sermon, uh, I come to realize that uh, this topic has been used before, but in another name. It was called Adam, where are you? So in other words, Christians, where are you? That was Adam saying, where are you and what is your excuse? You have to understand that just because you're given an excuse, it doesn't mean that you are excused. OK, so they gave Adam, Adam and Eve gave the first excuse written in the Bible. In Genesis 3, 6 to 9, it says this. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden and the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. They were hiding. But in nine, it said, but the Lord God called Adam and said to him, where are you? Question is, where should Adam be? Where are you is not Adam. You should be in the garden where well, he was in the garden, but he was hiding himself. And therefore, he was given a, a, an excuse. So the question is, is this a spiritual question? What is your excuse? Why did God ask Adam, where are you? He's trying to find out, Adam, where are you spiritually? Because you ain't where you're supposed to be. So Genesis 3, 7, it said, and the eyes of them both was open and, and after they ate this, this tree and they found out they were naked. So where was his state of mind before the transgression? His state of mind was in a, a powerful place. Before Adam's transgression, he was so wise that he could name all the creatures brought before him according to their nature and qualities. He could just name them, had no problems with it. That's how wise he was. OK, uh, uh, and now he does not even know the first principle concerning the divine nature of God. I mean, what did that fruit do to him? It was supposed to be the tree of knowledge, but it made everybody stupid. So he thought he could hide from God. He forgot that, the, 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 you know, one of God's divine nature. It is, is that he is, first of all, all knowing. So he knew where he was. OK. And second of all, he he's uh, God is all uh, omnipresent. So he's everywhere. So while you hide behind a tree, he right there, too. Saying, what are you doing? So instead of that, he right behind him talking about Adam, where are you? And so the question comes to you, where are you? Where are you at? Where are Christians now? Where are you now? Where should a Christian be on a Sunday and a Saturday? Or Saturday? Where should they be? Now, you know, I'm saying Saturday, y'all, because there are people who uh, worship God on the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day happens to be on a Saturday. Uh, Sunday happens to be the Lord's day. When we read that about his resurrection, it says that he rose on the Sunday, which was the Lord's day. If he's going to rise up, it might as well be his day. I don't want anybody to get me wrong. I'm not talking about people who are who have health issues. I'm not talking about people who are at work. I'm not talking about people who must be quarantined uh, or must quarantine themselves because they were out of town or on vacation. I ain't talking about these people. I ain't talking about somebody that's disabled. I ain't talking about that. You know what, or you should know where you are. But God knows if your excuse is excusable. You with me? When God called Adam, the question was spiritual. Adam answered, answers was carnal and full of excuses. Jesus explains how men will even give him an excuse. If we look in Luke uh, 9, 57 to 62, as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Y'all remember that servant? And you say the same thing. I will follow you. I will follow you, Lord, wherever you go. But then you come up with an excuse. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. In other words, you're going to have to give a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice some of your own wants and your desires to follow the Lord. 
you must sacrifice your wants and your desires to follow the Lord. It will be always uncomfortable. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Would you not think that I have to go to a funeral so I can't make a Sunday is a pretty good excuse? I don't know if it was really a good excuse or not, but God didn't accept it. The Lord himself did not accept it. And he said unto him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Leave the dead, what is that? Those who reject the word of God and the gospel, lead them to deal with their dead. And he called them dead. 61 it said, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. I'm going to follow you, Lord, but I need to say bye to some people. No telling when I'm going to see my family again. Right. I will follow you, Lord, but I might lose my family. I don't believe that the Lord went for that either. Jesus said unto him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. You can't say you're going to serve the Lord and start looking back at other things that you could be doing right now. You're not fit. You ain't fit for the kingdom. Many Christians are very skillful at the art of making excuses. And they'll make one of the another Christian feel like, oh, OK, I understand. That's a good excuse. You know, but God is the one that decides whether you made a good excuse or not. And if you're not sure whether your excuse is good, check the word. Because the word says, put me first and all of my righteousness, not you and all your sleep. Not you and all your job. Don't put put me first, he's saying, before your children, before your wife, before your job. Before your, uh, um, what is it, uh, your, your school, before all these things, put me first. Check the word, and the word will tell you whether you are right or wrong. The most common excuse used today by Christians is, I can serve God anywhere. So they give themselves the excuse that, that I, I, I can do all this. Now, now let's compare like we did with Adam. Let's compare now your present state with your past state. Your state when you first was saved. You didn't tolerate. I know many of us did not tolerate any excuse that would tell us uh, uh, that it's not necessary to go to church today. We just didn't tolerate that. And we didn't know anything. We didn't really know much about Christianity or God. We just knew that we're supposed to be at church. It was so well known that when in my time, uh, the, the, every store and gas station was closed on Sunday. Don't go, don't run out gas on Sunday because you ain't going to get none until Monday. That's just the way it was. You didn't go to the store on Sunday. This store would say, you're supposed to be in church. They say, don't come here. You're supposed to go to church. That's the only goal you go to is church. Don't come anywhere. Now, can I get a witness on that? Because, see, they think that only I was in those days. Hey, Amen. There's some other folks in those days, too. You know, you just could not find anything open. And you, it's funny, we didn't look for anything to be open. We went to church. We had a great time. We came home. Mom had the great meal and we ate and we talked and we had fun with each other. And then Monday came, we went to work or went to school. That's just the way it was. And, and I don't know what has happened. What has happened is excuses came to where people say, listen, we got to make money. So I ain't closing on Sunday. Somebody just said, I ain't closing. I ain't going to church. And then they didn't do it. Even the sinners had to close their shop. Now, they wasn't happy about it, but I'm sorry you had to close. Because most of the time, most of the sinners, even though they never got saved, still went to church. Amen. Because I'm telling you, those men, those sinning men, was hoping for a, a saved woman. I'm looking for a good woman. 
It says in your Bible that a, a man that finds a good woman finds a good thing or finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. So uh, they even went to church, but they never did serve the Lord. So if we check out our own self, when you first got saved, you did not tolerate excuses. Not, you, not other people. Your excuse, you did not tolerate. You was like, no, that's not going to happen. So that's where Revelation 2.4 comes in when it says, nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou hast left your first love. When you first got saved, you were a certain person. You committed. You were loyal. And you did not give yourself a certain excuse. So what happened? Why? Did we change? Because we have tasted, y'all, like Adam and Eve, the tree of knowledge. We think we know now. What is your excuse? Why did God ask Adam, where are you? And so the question comes to you, where are you? Where are you at? Uh, Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.